Now, you may not recognize where I am right now. In fact, this is my little secret prospecting location. But uh, recently, I figured out there's actually gold here. And this is what I've been digging so far. So when you want to start mining for gold, you got to think of yourself, think to yourself, uh, two things. One, has there been gold there in the past? And two, where is the gold coming from? Well, normal gold uh, forms in rocks in places uh, we call quartz veins. Now, I don't see any quartz veins around here, but if you see this kind of line thing going up right there, that is very much how a quartz vein looks. It looks a little whiter, might be a little rustier, but these veins kind of go through the rock and form long ago from the roots of ancient hot springs. And over time, mountains came up, weather eroded them down, and the gold is now in the streams. And I said before, gold's pretty heavy, so if you're going to look for gold in the stream, you can't just look anywhere. If I, if I grab some dirt right here, this is not going to have gold. There's no gold there. Probably not right there. You need to look and think, where, if I was the heaviest thing in the river, where would I go? Well, if I'm the heaviest thing in the river, heavy things drop really fast, so probably be way down deep. Not at the bottom of that pool, but at the bottom of all the gravel at the bottom of that pool. And if I'm crafty enough, if I'm gold, right, I'll look for cracks in the bedrock like that, that are way underground, and I try to get myself lodged in there and stuck. Well, obviously, trying to get to the bottom right here would take a very long time. So, uh, Instead, let's think about other places of gold to go. Well, if I'm in a flood, because you know floods happen, and that's when most of the stuff in the river gets deposited, I would come floating along, floating along, until something in the current got slow, and then I would drop. So like, in between all the, these roots of the tree, behind rocks, on the inside bend of rivers. And so, you know that rivers this present river wasn't always here. At one point in time, this is where it flowed, and at another point in time, it flowed up there. So, well, I have begun my search by digging as deep as I can under this old riverbed. And you see these big rocks? Well, see how they're all rounded? Which means they have come very far upstream and were brought here by the action of some flood. So, right now, Probably my best chance of finding gold is to dig on the downstream side of these rocks. But in order to do that, I need to move these rocks over. So let me try that and I'll come back to you after that. Okay, I'm back here for about an hour and a half of moving stuff. Um, I didn't get as far as I thought I would, but I still got pretty far. And uh, now I'll start digging material and then processing it in a sluice. Now, when, when gold's in gravel, you can't see it. In fact, even if when you put it on your pan, you won't be able to see it for a very long time. So in order to get to it, you need to first process it somehow. Um, what I use is I use a sluice. This little box right here. And I can pour lots and lots of buckets on the top end, process 30, 40 buckets of material. And the material will wash down. These little ridges are slanted above the water. They make kind of an eddy like my hand makes. And that's where the water has a lower pressure and the gold will drop out of those areas. So if I can process 30 or 40 buckets, that means all those all the gold from those 30 or 40 buckets will be concentrated in this one sluice. So I don't have to waste time panning and panning and panning. I can process a lot of material and be sure I got something. So I'm going to get some material and I'm going to show you what the sluice does with it. Alright, I've dug a few buckets of, of uh, material that probably has gold in it and I'm going to show you how I process this material in the sluice. First, I get a better spot. Basically, you just shovel up a good shovel full and then we pour it out. And look what happens. This black part right here is called a rubber mat. This is if you're in a very uh, productive area, you'll see the gold on this mat. 
before you panic. So I, I like to call it the motivating map because if there's gold there, you're going to be digging faster. Then there's these metal little ripples. They're kind of angled backwards like that towards the flow. So material will build up in the back of them. And then under that, there's like a carpet. And this carpeting has little ridges and folds and acts like moss on a stream and will catch little pieces of gold as the gravel washes down. And further down, we have our last part, which is expanded metal. This kind of also acts like a, like a riffles, but it also kind of acts like carpet because it's kind of in between the sizes and it'll catch all the medium gold. So, so look what happens when I throw some material. Okay. See how the rocks jump around? It's because the heavy stuff will go to the bottom and get caught in the sluice, including heavy rocks, heavy sand, and all the lighter stuff gets jostled about and becomes what we call the tailings. All these rocks at the end of the sluice. Because these don't have any gold in it. And you'll see in a lot of areas that used to produce gold, there'll be just piles and piles of these rocks. And there's no gold in them, but there used to be. And people have gone through them and sluiced them or done other things to remove the gold. If you ever decide that you want to go digging for gold someplace, uh, one very important thing to look for would be something called rust streaks. Now rust streaks are what they sound like. They're just streaks of rust in gravel um, on rocks. And they form because uh, when the river is in flood stage, when there's big lots of water going through, boulders are being moved around, um, all the heavy things, including iron, and there's actually quite a bit of iron in most rivers, will settle to the very bottom, wherever that might be. And in the desert, where there's lots of clay, the clay might harden and all the iron will go to the bottom of the clay, just on top of the clay. And then when the river stops, all the iron is left there and over hundreds of years the iron will rust and turn into this kind of stuff. See how the rock is kind of discolored, it's like yellow, a little reddish, stuff right here. Now these I found digging down here, deep deep, somewhere up in here. And that's a good sign because wherever the iron is, is usually where the gold is too. So, remember, the rust streaks are good. Iron is also good. Um, so, we'll see what we get.